Well, hello all. It is that time of year where it is almost dark at quarter past two in the afternoon. It's so miserable, but it is also time to get garlanding. So I thought you could come along with me today and I am making some large arrangements for a house for their Christmas decorations. And you might like to see how I do it. So come along with me and I'll show you how. By the way, you can always subscribe to the channel. You can press the bell icon. This is a dance, so I encourage you to do this. And we'll tell you when we've got new clips coming out. And if anything we share with you over the next 10 or 15 minutes is useful, you can always buy me a coffee and the link is in the bio and in the blurb for all my different clips. Right, enough chat. Let's get on. What have we got cut for this lovely arrangements? Let's go. Well, we've got this gorgeous bobbly ivy, each stem about a foot long, because then I know how much I've got for the garlanding. The curly whirly willow is brilliant for sticky outy bits, what I call twiggery pokery. In this house, that is a technical term. And of course, variegated holly. Now this comes from a friend because my variegated holly is neither so lush nor so, uh, nor so long stemmed, but it will look lovely on this great big garland. Um, moving over into the trolley bay, which at this time of year has lots of bobbles on it, which is very attractive. And under the bay, loads of Monterey pine, which is out of focus because, um, because it is under the bay. So, I've got one, two, three, four, five different kinds of ingredient for my garlanding. Ooh, it's flashing. Um, <laughs> and one more for luck. Here are some crab apples, which, so that's six different ingredients for my garlanding. I should have more coming down from my Cornish growers, uh, but um, because the, uh, because the new variant of COVID, means that half the couriers have come down with it. And so everything, if you are expecting anything to be delivered by courier, hold it, don't hold your breath, put it that way. And then when all the elements are put together, I've got some bits and pieces of golden. It's amazing how in the summer these look rather dead and sad, but now they look golden. This is uh, Nicandra fisiloides, shoe fly plant. Very, very good. Can you imagine that in a garland? Um, my lovely grass, which I've got, which will stick out in a golden way. And some of this limonium sea lavender, which you can see in a Christmassy way. It's like a little sprinkling of snow in a natural, because we don't use any spray or any wire or any of that malarkey. It all needs to be able to go straight onto the compost heap afterwards. Um, and this is a sweet little look. Isn't that sweet? That is called uh, ping pong. It's a scabiosa ping pong. And because it's like a little ping pong ball. And it's grown especially for its seed heads. So I grew that last summer for seed heads because I knew that I'd be using it at my Christmas wreaths. There we go. So how much of everything have I cut? Well, I'll just put these down. Um, Let's put them up here. I have cut, I'm doing 15 feet of garlanding and I reckon, actually it's gonna be one 15 foot length and one six foot length. And uh, I reckon each piece is a foot long. So I have cut enough for one piece of everything for a foot. So that's how I know I've got enough. And then I'm going to arrange it all along a big, long piece of very strong string. I'll show you. Come on. So, for the garlanding, all I've got is some nice chunky material and green string. And the reason I'm using green string is it won't show, uh, but it's also string. So it's biodegradable and can be chucked on the compost heap. I tie one piece of string to the end of my garland and I make sure to leave a nice long piece so that 
uh, I can attach the end of the garland to the stairs, for example, which is where these are going. And then it is really, really simple. I take one piece at a time, so nice Monterey pine, and I tuck it in and I find the piece on. And you just whizzle, whizzle round and round. It's fiddly and you cannot rush it, but it doesn't take as long as you might think. The skill is not to try and have all of your material at one end, it, which by which I mean, if you're used to making bouquets, then you're always trying to have everything up here. But because I'm not making a bouquet, I'm making a garland, I'm working my material down the stem. And I don't want this to look like an Oxford Street shop. <laughs> I want it to look light and foraged. So I'm not going to over, over egg the pudding, so to speak. I'm not gonna make it too thick. The place where it's going to go is very beautiful. So I don't want it to argue with the place. It is literally going to be bound in. I want it to look relatively light when it's attached. And I can go on in this vein for as long as I like, meters and meters. This particular little number is going to be 15 foot long. Um, I'm just gonna make one section so that you can see the whole process. These are very heavy. So I'm going to garland them in tie them in kind of halfway up the stem so this bit will be free and this bit will be free but you'll still see them um, it's been an amazing year for crab apples this variety is red sentinel and it's a real winner because it keeps the fruit on until december so you see look i can let go because it's being all held together by this nice strong string. And I'm a big fan, normally I use a lot of, will, uh, for, my, for all my garlanding really, I use um, raffia, but this is long and heavy and this string is fine. So, um, and it's not gonna be outside, it's not going to get wet and sag. Um, look at the curly whirly willow, that's a nice extra. Um, Can you hear it? I've got people next door listening to the, to the music. Um, anyway, and on we go. So I'm going to keep making it and I'll show it to you when it's finished. But that's the principle. It's not difficult. And you can see how lovely it would be hanging down the stairs as when it's done. Right, better get on. It's very much worth knowing the length of your table because then you can know when you've made enough garlanding. So this garland is going to be about 15 foot long and this table is eight foot long. So I'm a little over halfway there. I had thought I would make this garland in sections, but in the end, I just cleared the table and that is 15 foot long enough for a big old staircase. And when I get there, I will pudge it by adding little bits of silvery honesty seed heads and things, but I'll install it first and then I'll add the wild, the dry bits, glittery dry bits. Right, another six foot to go for the mantelpiece. And just for the mechanics, it's just one long piece of string and I've tied it off at the end. There are crab apples all the way through, threaded through, and they'll show up and hang down when it's attached to the banister when we get there. Um, and you could keep this fresh if you were making one of these for yourself. Um, this is still quite early December, but it's for a shoot. Um, but if you wanted to make one for Christmas, then you could install it, but then just spritz it a little bit from time to time. And the greenery will absorb the water through the leaves 
I do love the crab apples. Now, here is a cunning little tip. If you are making a garland, which is going to go over a mantelpiece and wants to hang down one side and the other side, look for a piece of greenery with a natural corner in it, like this piece of holly. So I am tying, I'm binding up my garland, but I've got a natural corner here. I also happen to know that my lovely client is going to put hooks either side of the fireplace where I can attach this garland. So I'm going to give myself something to hook it with by tying a little loop. And that will just give the whole thing some stability because obviously quite often hanging garlands onto dressing the top of mantelpieces is occasionally a um, precarious business because often mantelpieces are quite narrow and the material you want to stay on it might be heavy and forward facing. So if you give yourself a little loop, then you can hook the loop to make sure that the whole thing is safe. And then this will go, and here's my corner, but it doesn't look like a corner. Do you see? Um, there you go, <laughs> top tip from one who knows. <laughs> to either side of the fireplace so it won't fall forward. It will need pudging. Uh, pudging is a technical term which you may learn if you spend a lot of time watching my videos to make sure that we can't see any of the ends in the middle where my mouth is and uh, because I turned it round so that it has two ends it's not all going in the same direction. Anyway I'm quite pleased with that. I think it's going to look very fine on the mantelpiece. Let's pop it down. <laughs> And now, now I can do the easy stuff. A lovely big kind of Liberace inspired number to go on the piano, the grand piano, and the door wreath. I'll see you in a minute. So now it's the next day and I'm ready to take this over and deliver it. And a good way to move it is to have a long piece of craft paper. I'm a florist, all florists have great big rolls of craft paper, but a great big roll of paper means you can move, move the garland without putting any pressure on it. So you can move the whole thing at once. Um, so it's now on its lovely piece of paper and I'm going to kind of wrap it up and then I'm going to fold it up and put it in the car. I'll show you when it's in the car. I'm quite pleased with that great big long sausage. Now I'm going to put it in a box. And there it is folded in two and in its box. It's all about the, the delivery. And then you need other bits of kit. For example, useful string, nice bronze ribbon for covering your workings. Uh, no florist goes anywhere without cable ties, uh, snips and scissors, basic essentials <laughs> for all good florists. And the, look at this is my untidy yard here. Um, a useful box of lovely silvery honesty seed heads for pudging. There we are. It's all tied on with string. We didn't need any of the other stuff. Mm. 
we tied it on to the bubbles at the bottom of the mirror in the end. So it was just dandy. I'm just filming my yes. my garlanding we'll along your and quickly talk to this. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to just show you. So I hope you enjoyed this little project with me. Um, it's now much later, dark and moody and miserable. So I'm looking forward to a little glass of wine and Strictly Come Dancing on the telly box. But first I've got to ring my mum because it's 10 to six and I ring my mum at 10 to six on a dark winter's evening. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the session, please do subscribe, press the bell icon, or we'll tell you when we've got new clips coming out. And if any of this information has been useful, or you've just enjoyed it, then do please buy me a coffee. The blurb is in, the link is in the blurb to each of my clips. Thanks very much, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.